How do you overcome the discomfort in those first few days and weeks after you quit drinking? How do you overcome the cravings and how do you get to feel normal again? That's what this video is about. Come on, let's walk. I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com and today I wanted to just talk about those feelings of discomfort and uh, craving and the feeling that something is missing out of your life, that you're missing out on things uh, because you don't drink anymore. How do you get over that? You know, How do you put that to the back of your mind and move on with your life? Um, it's exactly the same way as you became familiar with drinking in the first place is through habitual behavior, through familiarity, and you only get that familiarity through training, through your own training, through training yourself, and repetition, repeating the same things over and over and over again. I'll give you a couple of examples just to show you my point here. Um, when I first, I've lived in Spain now for um, four years, and I've been studying Spanish, not doing a great job of it, but studying Spanish um, every so often for about six years now, right? And I think I've got a pretty good handle on, on the language now. I still can't have a full-blown conversation with somebody, but I get by, right? I make myself understood, and I can understand most of what other people are saying. Now, when we moved to Spain, that's exactly what I thought in my head at the time that I had a pretty good grasp of the language. And I remember the first time I actually had to speak the language when I had no choice but to speak the language because I'd been dodging it for a, uh, a while. We live in an area where there are a lot of expats, right? So there are a lot of people from Ireland, England, Holland, uh, Russia, Germany. So if you choose not to, you can live your life here without having to speak very much um, Spanish. You know, you only speak Spanish when you go to the hospital, for instance, or you learn a few phrases that you need at the supermarket checkout. But in general, you can spend your life just mixing with your own kind. And many people do that, right? But that's not for me. Um, I don't want to do that. And eventually I got the courage up and I initiated a conversation with a guy and he started talking to me and I felt like I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. And I felt so awkward and uncomfortable. And he basically said to me, well, you tried to talk to me in Spanish. You're learning poco a poco, little by little. Good for you, you know, but um, end of the conversation because obviously there was no conversation right now as I say through practice through familiarity through training I can go into a situation and I can make myself understood uh, another example from quitting alcohol in the first few days after I stopped drinking I went into um, a restaurant a local restaurant sat down at the table ordered the food that I would normally eat and I found it so unfamiliar and uncomfortable to order a soft drink instead of a, a beer or a, a bottle of wine which is what they were um, that's what our usual thing was to order a bottle of wine and drink wine with dinner and that was completely unfamiliar to me it was alien territory and it was almost as if my mouth didn't want to speak the words. It was almost as if my mouth, as if I was speaking a foreign language. Now, I have no problem with that, you know. After three years, it's like, yeah, it's become so familiar walking in to any place, into a bar or a restaurant or a coffee shop and ordering anything but alcohol. Um, and I can order, order alcohol for my partner or for whoever's with me no problem there either right so that's the second example a third example is with other people um, speaking to you right or other people in their uh, interactions with you 
uh, with your friends and with your family, um, with people who know you, um, you are a drinker, right? You are the person that, a person that when they go out with, you have a certain drink, they know what you drink. And it's like, when, like for instance, lads, right? You understand this, women as well, right? Like for instance, when you're at the bar, right? With your best friends, um, and there's a round, you know exactly what your buddy's gonna have, right? You know what um, each of your friends is gonna, is gonna take, whether they're drinking pints or whether they're drinking shorts or whether they're drinking half pints or whatever, right? You know what they're gonna drink. When you put yourself into these situations for the first um, while, for the first while, Your friends are gonna be dumbstruck, right? Especially those who you haven't told. You know, this is why I say it's important to tell the people who are closest to you as give them as much notice as soon as you can before you quit because you avoid a lot of this stuff. The closest people to you. Um, so the first time the people that you haven't told the first time you go out with these people and they say to you, um, pint, and you go, no, spring water, or whatever you're drinking, orange juice, they're gonna be gobsmacked. It's unfamiliar territory to them, right? They're not used to it, and they might take the piss out of you. They might make jokes, they might, whatever, they're gonna say stuff, you know, whatever comes to their mind they're gonna do because they're unfamiliar. They're not used to you not drinking their own familiarity becomes familiar after a while when they've trained themselves. It's all training. Um, you've trained them, whatever. By your persistence, you repeatedly don't drink anymore and eventually become known as a non-drinker. You know, it was the same with me when I first started telling people that I was becoming a vegetarian. It was, if, it was as if I had two heads it was as if I was telling people that I was gay. Nothing wrong with being gay, by the way, if that's your thing. Um, people were shocked. Um, now, people live with it. I was shocked at the time as well, in all fairness. Um, you know, I am part of my identity, as I've said before, was me being a drinker, uh, a meat eater, a big, tough Irish man. I worked in forestry, for God's sake, with chainsaws all day. I wore forestry clothes. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. That was me, except the women's clothing part. Um, so yeah, and now all of those parts of me that I thought were indelible parts of me, parts that I couldn't get rid of, are now gone. And they've been replaced by other things that at first I was uncomfortable with, at first other people were uncomfortable with, and now I am completely comfortable with. Yes. I never thought it would be. It's, uh, it's difficult in the beginning because of those things, because of the discomfort, because of the awkwardness. You feel awkward. It's like putting your shoes on the wrong feet. Do you remember doing that when you were a kid? putting your shoes on the wrong feet and you don't know you're doing it because you, you, you haven't yet, you know, become accustomed to your shoes on the right feet. But you put your shoes on the wrong feet. Now, you know straight away what you've done. Now, when you take alcohol out of your life, such a big chunk out of your life, that's what it's like. It's like having your shoes on the wrong feet persistently, you know. So every time you go into a situation that you used to, drink alcohol, the unfamiliarity kicks in, the shoes are on the wrong feet, you feel wrong, you feel awkward, you feel like you want to take your shoes off and put them back onto the right feet again, but you know you can't, you just can't do that anymore, you know, so the only way for your familiarity for your unfamiliarity to become familiar is through 
your own training through habitual training right through repetition that's the only way you're going to get a habit to um, establish itself in your life is through this habitual training again do it again and again and again and again and again and repeat it and repeat it over and over and just carry on doing that and eventually it will become a natural part of who you are it will become as natural to not drink as um, it is natural for you to drink now right that's why I'm saying to you I can't understand somebody who still refers to themselves as an alcoholic because if you do not do something over and over and over again and you build different pathways into your life and you structure new habitual uh, foundations and you build on those foundations how the hell can you refer back to yourself as the old thing you can't it just doesn't make any sense right so anyway i'm going to carry on with my walk now and i hope you all have a great week or a great day um, and just remember repetition over and over and over again that's the way to build your habit that's the way to get familiar with this thing that's the way to get rid of your awkwardness and your unfamiliarity so until next time i'm kevin o'hara for alcohol mastery onwards and upwards <laughs>